For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. So, sometimes the Holy Ghost can help you and give you certain instructions from 12 to 2. Let that be the time dedicated for me. It can change. But then 12 o'clock, midnight, when others are sleeping, there you are in your room. Blessed are you, O God. And for months, nothing will happen. You will keep praying. Or at least you do not sense that anything is happening. Lord, where is your voice? Where is the encounter I'm experiencing? Mm -mm, nothing will happen. One day something is going to happen to you. You will come to the place of prayer like before. And while you are praying, Shalika Prandege Bereko Siata. There he comes. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He will reveal himself to you in a way that only you can know. And he will place an unction and a grace upon you. He will measure a thousand cubits for you in the spirit. You will come out of that experience. You may not even know what has happened to you. Till you go back to the place of assignment. And you will see like Moses that a dimension of the glory has rested on your face. It's others that will look at you. Do you know Moses met God and others did not have to go up the mountain. They had to look at Moses to have the same experience that God had. That God gave him. So we bow as we enter the throne room and we cast ourselves down at your feet. For you are holy, thou art holy, there is none like you in your presence that is where i must be and in that place of prayer downloads of the prophetic blueprint of your destiny starts coming one day in the place of prayer you will now hear i have called you and I've ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. You will write it. It does not make sense, but you write it. Now your destiny is piecing together. One day you will go to prayer and the Lord will tell you that your anointing will move upon the stringed instrument. You will write it. These are all the pieces of the, the, the puzzles that help you to be a carrier of the glory. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp and you will write it down. And then you will pray and pray again. Pray and pray again. Pray and pray again. Until your body begins to have a formation. And you see the mantle that was assigned to that body starts coming. Because the more the formation is, is an attracting power. That is how spirits come into bodies. Because the bodies look like the vessels that they currently are in. So they can leave that body and come into another body. You subject yourself to prayer. Hey, hey, hey. You are praying. Ah, weeks becoming months. In one room no no pedigree no nothing but a superior version of you is evolving from a family full of curses don't worry about the curses you just submit yourself to prayer ah, there is a fire that begins to be burning in your spirit as you submit yourself to prayer submit yourself to prayer the Bible says he maketh his ministers wings numa his spirits his, 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 his angels wings and his ministers flames of fire that's what is happening to you as you submit yourself to prayer systemic prayer strategic prayer 
Ena kateka para katos kafrate kebeleketa. Embre kete pe katos koto preketa. Shamanda sana katoska. Egrete kes koto po koto shegete. Embre kete beleko shane kaskadia. Embra katos kafrese kete beleka. Endes kaveshe les kaveshe les kata. Kepra kato prekete beleka tosiata. Oh, hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. The ministry of prayer forming you shaping you molding you you are subscribing to a spiritual template that is making you become a kind a type of vessel you are attracting by your diligence attracting by your consistency a kind of mantle a kind of grace and a kind of glory In the name of Jesus. Now sit down. Sit down. Now listen carefully. Please. I want you to covenant with yourself. That you are going to get this morning's teaching. Listen to it again. By the Spirit of God, I'm revealing to you a very deep, mysterious, irrefutable formula. I want you to listen to what I'm about to tell you now. Everybody, please listen. Please, let me have your attention. There is a side effect to becoming prayerful that you may not know. Now that you have prayed, I want you to listen. The moment you submit yourself to prayer, you are in a position of a dangerous risk that I must tell you. Listen, listen, listen. Do you know why? Because the law of the altar is that the moment you submit yourself to prayer, watch this, your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit become alive and become heightened. And these, if Satan cannot stop you from prayer, the next thing that he does is to appear as an angel of light. That's why I said, listen to what I'm about to teach you. Many people's deception started because of the health of their prayer life. Many, especially those called into the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. I will tell you most of the error. The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that some in the latter time shall depart from the faith and they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of God demons it is a risk to suddenly be open to the realm of visions it is a risk to suddenly be open to the realm of encounters because as a naive believer exploring the realm of the spirit anything you see in your vision can be told you that it is God listen carefully there are people who went up the mountain sincerely and came back with ordinances that were not from God there are people who sincerely submitted themselves to days and weeks of prayer and fasting and came back with spiritual templates from the realm of the spirit but not by the Holy Ghost. There are people who came back with their organs activated along the lines of the prophetic. Sincerely, they were not wrong people. When Jesus went to pray, who did he meet in the wilderness? Please talk to me. <laughs> when your Jesus went to pray I thought prayer should drive the devil but guess who was waiting for Jesus in the place of prayer after praying for 40 days with fasting I thought you would see Satan shaking and running away Satan was patiently waiting that means when you give yourself to prayer 
it's not only angels who are attracting the realm of the spirit because it's the prayers of the saints are like an incense that rise and there is a signal in the realm of the spirit there is somebody who is assuming that formation of the glory and satan will take advantage of your sincerity that's why i said promise that you will listen to this teaching again that is the reason why those who submit to the ministry of prayer alone are in danger. Did you hear what I said? I've told you prayer is not everything. Prayer does act. Prayer has its ministry. But many people have shut down on every other provision that makes for the growth of the saints. And they have immersed themselves in a bid to access power. The only thing they know and the only thing they may have done, sincerely so, is prayer. And most of them have come with all kinds of erroneous things. Doctrines. So someone will tell you in the place of prayer, I went somewhere in the spirit. I don't know where. And I came back with a message. I came back with certain things. And you will see a semblance of power. And it begins to graduate until it becomes like the doctrine of Balaam. There are many things today, respectfully speaking, that have polluted the sanctity of the altar in the body of Christ today. It did not come by the ministry of wicked men. They were not wicked. They were sincere people who did not understand the full scope of the training. And they chose one aspect of the training and left the rest. And the devil cast in on their sincerity and revealed things to them that have become a destruction to themselves. I know people who prayed and prayed until they had mental problems. Have you seen people like that? And even while they are mad, they are praying in tongues. It looks like a mockery to God. Eventually, they will take them to the hospital and sedate them. No, genuine prayer does not lead to that. But I told you there is a risk because it exposes you and you encounter all kinds of spirits and every spirit is speaking. So you will hear a spirit from the realm of the spirit loud and clear and you say go and stand by the road and because your heart is already inclined to obey you will say yes lord and go and stand but you find out that the more you obey that spirit that formation of christ has stopped you are becoming like something else that is not christ this is where the next training comes right please the ministry of the word the second key that helps the believer to become a person of stature is the ministry of the word is God helping us I know the lion I know the lamb I know the lion I know the lamb I believe in the lion I believe in the lamb I believe in the lion I believe in the lamb I follow the lion I follow the lamb Hallelujah Listen the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer has become an age-long conflict which is more superior to which especially in the Pentecostal and the charismatic circles now I'm saying this respectfully this is a believers meeting am I right on that so we have a group that may perceive themselves to be people of prayer especially the prophetic and the apostolic ministry then we have those who perceive themselves to be people of the word and sometimes the dichotomy is so wide that it almost looks as if there is enmity but the bible never created that dichotomy are we together jesus called himself the word but he said my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations am i right on that now i want to show you the roles that they play please look up 
Jesus went as the word of God went in Matthew chapter 4 Jesus went to go and pray and fast everybody please look up please look up please look up please look up Jesus is done praying everybody say prayer, prayer. one more time say prayer. prayer Jesus is done praying and the next thing he sees is that Satan appears to him am I right on that whether it's from the realm of his thoughts or it was a physical manifestation the most important thing is that there was an interaction with this spirit entity Satan are we together and watch this the first thing Satan told him is don't forget that prayer produces power now in the place of prayer you have power turn this stone to bread in other words convert that power to be an instrument for meeting your personal need forget about the bigger cause that is the first there are three temptations every man must survive to rise i'm not teaching on that but those temptations of jesus number one is a temptation on your stomach manipulating the word of god and ministry to be used as an instrument of your stomach number two is spiritual laxity he took him up a holy mountain and said fall down spiritual carelessness for he shall put his angels charge over you the third temptation is a temptation of influence he took him into an exceeding great mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and their glories therefore and he said bow to me and i will give this to you but this is not what we're discussing now watch this satan comes to jesus and said turn this stone to bread look at jesus's reply it is he never said i have prayed it is help me it is why didn't he say satan are you not respecting my prayer and fasting do you not know the energy that has been generated there he said it is written do you know if Jesus said, okay, Satan, that's a nice suggestion, and turned that stone to bread, his entire prayer life, the spiritual investment he has made will be nothing. Simply because he did not know what was written. Then, let me show you now the value of prayer added to the word. Satan said, oh, I see that you respect the word too. So let's speak scripture now. Next temptation, Satan also said, it is written. He shall put his angels to uh, his angels charge over you. They shall bear thee up on their wings. Satan is quoting scripture now. Lest you dash your feet against a stone. Now, Satan is saying it is written. You are saying it is written. That is where the power of prayer comes in. That gives you the discernment. Because if you do, if you have scripture alone and no discernment that has been generated satan will come like the damn cell in acts chapter 16 and also join you in prophesying and you say they are saying scripture is someone learning now satan said it is written i know it too and jesus said no by discernment i know that even though what is coming out of your mouth is scripture but you are not of god hmm. there are many many people today who have the word but they just have history and literature in their minds because the power that that backs up the word that should be generated in the place of prayer is not there and so most people just become respectfully speaking historians and they just make the bible says ye search the scripture for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me that the scriptures themselves testify of me but ladies and gentlemen do you know why the word of God is powerful? Because the word of God creates boundaries to your spiritual experiences. The Bible has a lot to say about the word of God. For instance, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, the Bible talks about the supremacy of the word. The supremacy of the word. Please give it to us. I hope someone is learning something this morning. Colossians 1 16. Let's read it if you can see it. Ready? One to read, please. For by him, the word now, where all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him do you know what that means that means even if you have an encounter outside this realm the word of god still has supremacy and you can use the word of god to vet every experience So an angel can appear to you 
and you can judge by the speakings of that angel if it does not reveal Jesus and it does not lead you through the pathway you have a right to judge that angel by the word to say no this is inconsistent with the character of God most people do not have the word of God and it has destroyed them in ministry look at this for instance let's assume that this gentleman seated and this lady say they are husband and wife do you know as a man of God by prayer and through the prophetic I can see for instance that there's something wrong with that lady but how I will handle it now would depend on my understanding of scripture not my understanding of prayer if this is a man of God and this is your church and this is your wife and there is something wrong number one the Bible says do not rebuke an elder in public so I'm not about to go and embarrass him and the wife because it will have an effect on the fold are you seeing how the Word of God guides you now to administer power with wisdom many people through the prophetic have, have, have access graces but the Word of God does not define the coordinates of their administering power and they keep they keep you know mismanaging power imagine an electric a high voltage naked wire on the ground will it do you any profit no you hold it and it will kill you but that same power can be channeled through a socket and you can charge something with it are you seeing now the word of god that's why the power of god resides within the word of god habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 the bible says in that sun like splendor is the hiding place of his power many people have not taken out time to be students of doctrine to be students of the word the bible says they gave themselves continually to the apostles doctrine please say doctrine one more time say doctrine now theologically speaking there are six foundational doctrines i'm not listing it for you there are six foundational doctrines that represent the believer's foundation if you do not have an encounter with these six doctrines building you are building upon shadows you find that in hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1 and 2 i'm not going to repeat it just you go and study it six of them foundational doctrines that build the believer or doctrine of baptisms repentance from dead works the bible lists them six of them that means when you begin to grow spiritually these are the foundational doctrines that you must learn Are we together why is scripture important because it helps us to understand the ways of God the ways of God the ways of God the ways of God why is scripture important because it can open our eyes Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation are we still together now yes acts chapter 20 i believe and verse 32 or, or thereabout it says and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified among them that are sanctified i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified everybody say the word one more time say the word say doctrine one more time say the word say doctrine the course curriculum that builds a believer to become a witness is called doctrine it comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of knowledge that makes a student to become something exact are we together in my example yesterday remember a medical student from year one to the final year has a body of knowledge that he must learn are we together so when you call somebody a doctor you mean one who has exhausted that body of knowledge and has been vetted and accredited by a council am i right on that yeah. doctrine as a man of god your concern is to come and teach god's people doctrine now let me tell you this you don't go and teach doctrine 
in a crusade ground and sometimes when you have a conference like this two three days you are you are short of time but as a pastor with your members you are not rushing anywhere so you take the time and teach don't teach members as if you are teaching in a conference you are not rushing anywhere they are there with you largely for years or for a lifetime so you take time methodically line upon line precept upon precept and let me tell you this when it has to do with knowing god our knowledge of god is infinite but when it has to do or the knowledge of god is infinite but when it has to do with raising believers to mature the body of truth that you communicate to them is finite there is an exact body of truth that you teach believers and then recycle it again and recycle it again so as a man of god your assignment is not newness it is freshness hmm. papa hagen spent his life teaching on faith and yet you will not listen to any of that message that looks like the other what what i think the pressure especially that the priesthood ministry in our world has today is there is such a itch to bring newness because it looks like i've taught on prayer will i teach on prayer again i've taught on fasting i've taught on the word of god i've taught on giving i've taught on the kingdom what else is there question a professor who has been teaching in the university for 35 years say in a faculty of medicine or architecture what has he been teaching is it true that he has been teaching the same thing is it true that he has been teaching the same thing <laughs> faith comes by hearing and hearing faith comes by hearing and hearing faith comes by hearing psychologists and educationists teach us that at the initial point of communicating a thought less than 26 percent of it is truly assimilated by those who hear so forget that members shout and say yes they are not getting anything most times you will need to repeat it with diligence and seriousness members are masters of flattering you they will comment unnecessarily and walk out and believe me that 26 percent is even for a serious student to the point that after jesus himself mentored the disciples he said when the spirit of truth is come he will remind you again is it not in your bible he will because the way you are now chances are excellent you will forget he will bring back to your memories everything I have taught you. Say amen. amen. That's why we thank God for technology now that can help us capture teachings that you listen to it again. And as you listen to it, you will hear something you did not hear. Even if you are the one who preached it, you will hear something you did not hear. And God can join seemingly unconnected thoughts together for you that no one else will hear in that teaching everybody say the word one more time say the word so i've taught you two agencies now in the making of men to become witnesses to become people of glory number one strategic and systemic prayer number two and when i talk of prayer you know that i also mean prayer with fasting hallelujah yes fasting is beneficial spiritually fasting is beneficial nutritionally are we together number three hmm. if you are learning say amen. amen you want to become a man of power you want to become a man of grace the third is called corporate fellowship write it down corporate fellowship is another mystery hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 corporate fellowship hebrews 10 25 charges us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together is that in your bible as the manner of some is but exhorting one another so much more as you see the days appearing listen to me if you want to become a man of power a man of grace a man that evolves into a vessel of honor you cannot ignore the place of corporate fellowship 
the convergence of believers together for the purpose of mentorship for the purpose of learning and for the purpose of growth this is very important you may have heard me teach that kingdom community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values every believer must have a company of believers that you are connected to this is very important i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord is that in your bible psalm 133 behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity the bible says it is like the oil upon the head of aaron the priest that comes down from his head to his bed down to his garment his skirt the bible says for there god hath commanded the blessing even life forevermore no matter your personal work with god there are certain dimensions in your dealings with god that cannot happen to you alone it will have to happen under the corporate anointing is someone learning now while they pray the holy ghost said to them separate me paul is is that in your bible while they pray together let me tell you the truth even if you encounter jesus in a vision he will still lead you back to his church for the continuity of your growth so don't say i don't need anybody i don't need any corporate gathering of believers it is a spirit of the antichrist it is deception are we together standing alone you will not be able to do much i promise you read bible history most of the believers that were alone they died early they could not stand the strength of many believers was when they were together and they returned to their company so you comfort one another how many of you have come to church very tired almost giving up and somebody just raises one song and while other people are just looking you are the only one crying because that song is healing you from something god placed an anointing this is why worship leaders in church must be serious in fact everybody in church workers must be serious pastors don't just deploy skill alone deploy spirituality and consecration and sacrifice because what they are singing is not a special number what they are singing is ministering life somebody's life depends on that song so you are supposed to lead a song you don't just stand up and then quickly check your list of songs and come and stand and you are the only one dancing you see that it's not ministering to the people it's very clear that you are, the, you are there's no life communicated when you stand to minister you reveal your secret place whether to minister in word or to minister in worship your communication is a window into your secret place and men can look and say what is this one now even those who are not spiritual can know you are raising a song of worship and people are sleeping there is nothing touching them everybody say fellowship question you have come for this conference now look at how many things you have learned does that mean you do not know god does that mean you do not have the holy ghost imagine that you were not here there are some of you what you are listening you are learning now maybe new some of you he's refreshing you again i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord let me give you number four are you learning show me a believer who follows these pathways and i show you a man who will become mighty let me recap number one that you must submit yourself to prayer submit yourself to the word submit yourself to fellowship are you ready now when you want to emerge you have to submit yourself to competence and to learning this is the fourth thing you will hardly hear this in church most times once we talk about prayer and the word we stop there but you want to become a career and a manifesto of the glory of god you must submit yourself to competence as touching your area of calling and election proverbs 22 and verse 29 the bible says see thou a man diligent in his business he shall stand before kings are we together 
he shall not stand before mean men please say competence one more time say competence there is a relationship between competence and excellence and the glory of god it says oh lord our god how excellent is your name there are many people who submit themselves in truth to prayer they submit themselves to the word they submit themselves to fellowship but they have not seen the value or the need to be competent competent in ministry competent in career competent in business you are a preacher don't come and stand let me tell you the truth the world that we live in today has options nobody will come and submit to your spiritual leadership with a man who you are not sound in scripture you are not even vast as to life because there are times you have to draw examples look at jesus he used parables from real life experiences you need in in your church are professors in your church are intellectuals nobody will come and make a fool of himself just coming to submit to nothing are we together no man will carry his wife and children and submit indefinitely and they are not learning learning and sound communication is a product of competence every scripture you quote is wrong even when you read it from the bible you are still reading what is wrong no no apostle god has called me to be a prophet stop moving around and embarrassing yourself learn the prophetic ministry sharpen yourself huh god has made you a teacher submit to doctrine get materials go for training if need be so that you are sound when you are given a sound exegesis of scripture people listen to you you are not communicating opinions this is not just english apostle i'm a businessman tell me what you know about business all i want to make is money no sir there are certain corridors of glory you will not get to are we together did you know that there are two people in scripture who rose to a position of influence and for all of them it was competence that took them there number one is joseph you find that in genesis 40 41 42 those two chapters talks about his final faces in the prison up to the time of his interpreting pharaoh's dream his eventual exaltation he was exalted and the bible says he was given a wife to marry the daughter of of Potiphera, the priest of on and they gave him a name zafatania they gave him a name a, an egyptian name and he became a great man he said i am pharaoh and only by your word will egypt be ruled can we find such a man so discreet and wise in whom the spirit of the gods is number two was daniel in babylon daniel was among the eunuchs that went into captivity and when you read Daniel 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, and Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's portion. Are we together? He was so sound in Daniel chapter 2. When you read from verse 28, now about to interpret the king's dream, the Bible says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And you now begin to read, you see that Daniel was elevated, he was exalted. You want to see the extent of Daniel's exaltation? Read Daniel chapter 5 from verse 1 downwards and then Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1 downwards. That they decided to put precedence and out of them, one of them was Daniel. And that he was such an exceptional person to a point that when the enemies of the kingdom wanted to find an occasion, they could not trace it to incompetence. They had to use prayer to trap Daniel. What a man. Make a covenant with yourself right now today. Whether you are a pastor, whether you are a businessman, that you will run away from incompetence. I respect the fact that you are a man of prayer. I respect the fact that you are a man of the word. And respectfully speaking, co-laborers in the vineyard, can I encourage us and beseech us by the message of God? Let's stop wasting the time of God's people. Otherwise, we'll be ready for empty pews in these last days. Because there are many alternatives. There are many options. That the opening of your mouth will be like the gates of wisdom being opened. People look forward to listening to you. Ah, he said, oh, that in, I was in the days of my youth. Right? When the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. And that by his light, I, I went through darkness. 
The young men saw me and stood. The old men saw me. They refrained their mouths from speaking. The excellency of wisdom. I made up my mind as a covenant. That it's not just being anointed that, that I will present to the world. I will do my homework. I will make sure by the grace of God I obtain grace to be competent. I, Daniel, understood by books. The Bible says to buy the truth and sell it not. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke spiritual laziness. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke intellectual laziness. Men of God, let's prepare our sermons with diligence. Don't stand on the stage and it will be very clear. You see, members are not stupid people. They know when you have not done your homework. To the point that they will stop shouting amen to your prayers because there is a track record of prolonged unseriousness. May you be so competent that people will come to learn God through you. They listen to you. As a businessman, they want to, they want to tap into your wisdom. The Bible says be wise as a serpent. When it has to do with living and excelling in the cosmos, you can even borrow the wisdom of the serpent. You see, there's no time I would have shown you from the life of the man we call Abraham. Did you know that when it had to do with the matters of the altar and matters of spirituality, Abraham was powerful, but he was ignorant. And when God wanted him to understand that secular knowledge, he took him to go and learn the wisdom is in your Bible. He took him to the house of Abimelech. He went there. Same thing with Moses. Moses went to learn the wisdom of the Egyptians. Most believers do not know that you need to have intelligence even of understanding the laws of life and the laws of destiny. It's not just spiritual laws alone. Destiny and life has laws and systems. Do you understand organization? Do you understand leadership? Do you, do you have people skills? Do you know how to coordinate systems to make them work? You can have a church that comes because of the anointing you are in. And you will find out that it will become a place of confusion because there is no organization. The first thing that came back to life in the dry bones of Ezekiel are the skeletons. Skeletons talk of structure. Before God will give life to any organization, the structure must be in place.